Hi, everybody. Uh, this is the, my name is Michael Meisner. I'm the director of engineering uh, at Pixel. Uh, we are a enterprise WordPress firm out of Knoxville. Uh, and uh, this is the third time that, uh, that I've conned the organizers in Asheville to let me speak here. Uh, and I, I'm appreciative of it quite a bit. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna not do this. Um, okay, uh, so, yes, your turn. John's talk earlier today I think was really interesting. And, and, uh, and I, I, before, I, the actual technical parts of this are, are great, but actually I think this is an opportunity for us to maybe have a little bit of a conversation about what we're doing. Um, and maybe a way to utilize Gutenberg in a standardized kind of way or maybe use it at all. So uh, who has launched a site where lever like Gutenberg is actually being leveraged for maybe like layout building, like rather than flexible content from ACF or CMB2 implementation or static page. So just keep your hands up real quick. Who's actually launched a site where it's used in a meaningful way other than blog posts? Okay, so three, four-ish, five. Um, how many, how many people have disable Gutenberg or Classic Editor installed all over the place still. 90 plus percent of your properties, right? Okay. Um, who has plans in the next year to, uh, to utilize Gutenberg as maybe a layout system? Okay. So who's been planning on trying to use ACF to do that? Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, who's done it that way yet? Okay, okay. So this is maybe very timely. Um, to give some backstory to this, uh, Elliot from ACF, um, who you may think, he's been working on it since, I don't know, probably the better, he, he spent a lot of time on it in 2018. It went into like a decent beta where people could really test it out, um, and I would say October or so, maybe a little earlier than that. Uh, and um, I've really enjoyed it. I've really, really enjoyed it. This is what I was hoping for. This has been, this is the replacement for how we've been doing flexible content with ACF for a long time. Um, I, I think it's inherently uh, more accessible content because the results of it all get stored inside of post content rather than trying to attach a whole bunch of post meta uh, along with it, right? So even if you're take, even if you're doing like decoupled sites, that pose every all the results of your custom thing that you had done, uh, instead of reiterating over that or trying to save the result of all that uh, and kind of rebuilding Gutenberg, it's it's just all there. It's all a little bit more accessible. Maybe some of that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. Um, so I I had. Uh, to me, this is like sort of the cure to the Gutenberg problem for my microcosm of WordPress, right? Uh, for me, WordPress uh, involves client needs. I've got to do that in a pretty custom way, custom enough that I can't reliably utilize page builder systems most of the time. Um, really love Beaver Builder. Great API, uh, they have a great developer API, so when I actually have to do that, I love them, but even then, generally speaking, that's not a very pragmatic thing for us to do for our clientele. So leaning on something like CMB2, ACF, uh, uh, gosh, the Metabox plugin that WordPress VIP requires that I can't remember the name of right now, that stuff, is, it, it, that's what we have to rely on. Um, and uh, Gutenberg, was looking like we were going to be doing a lot of React templating and a lot of state management in order to deal with. It just didn't feel like per, per block, right, or module or whatever you might call it within your own thing. If you had that down to four hours of work to set one up, at least for like the back end, maybe a lot less than that. In some ways, you could set it up in 20 minutes. You, you know the fields that you're going to register and you just get through it and you've got like a flow, but now if you're trying to change that over to 
custom building it with React and a slightly older version of React where we got their class <laughs> system, it, it, it's, it's hard. It's, it's kind of hard. And I actually love it. I mean, I took it seriously in Philly uh, watching Matt Wallowitz and learn JavaScript deeply. I did, but I understood, I've understood that over time that it, it's, for most businesses, it's not a pragmatic choice to be dumping time into JSX templates uh, and trying to manage state there and saving patterns and hit the rest of it, that's it's just kind of a pain in the butt in comparison to a lot of the workflows that we have right now. I hope that gets better um, with time and some maturity in the JavaScript uh, community. And But honestly, uh, that it's probably where it needs to be. And it, that's a certain kind of approach where you're actually building a super custom block for something really intentional and meaningful. For most of us doing and spinning up brochure-ish sites, right, uh, and even just high-level brochure sites that are custom and maintainable and something that should last five to 10 years, right, and have kind of a release pattern with it, um, or, or even just that existing as the front end and there's complex backends that you, who knows what approach you're using. This, this to me felt like the, the cure. Um, so uh, what I was really glad to see is that there's a whole bunch of people planning to try to build a site with Gutenberg, want to try to use ACF, and, and maybe you're, this is the first time you're getting exposed to it, because like I said, it went in to a good beta in October, but it wasn't until May 8th, right? I think it was just May 8th, barely a month ago, um, not even a, a month ago exactly. Uh, that 5.8 was released to the public, and I bet most of you have not really tried it out. Um, first thing to know about it is that you cannot, I don't know, okay, we got um, you cannot, you cannot just do this with the GUI. If, if you think you're gonna get away with that, that's, that's, not, that's not really an option. You're gonna have to register something in code. You cannot just use ACF's GUI. Um, and as a preachy thing that just, Maybe don't do that and try to like use their API anyways and version it. Um, you can do that with JSON a little bit, but I, I strongly recommend doing it in PHP. I'll show you a little bit about my workflow and how I do it. Um, okay. So what is the talk? This is this is a fairly opinionated approach on utilizing a WordPress block editor. Uh, this is to create these blocks, right? And how to use ACF uh, in order to have a pragmatic workflow. Um, if you've been using flexible content, uh, if you uh, are concerned about the scope and hours that it takes to build custom custom blocks, uh, if you are actually at a point in your career or your, your business where you're sort of getting ready to move on from page builders and you need to go a little bit more bespoke, uh, not that I like that word very much, uh, you're ready to start leveraging Gutenberg in a meaningful way. Uh, you're a heavy ACF CMV2 user. Um, and then I kind of stuffed Timber slash Twig into this be for a few different reasons. It's, it's the way I like to work, but I also think that um, it, we code better when we use the right tool at the right time, and I don't think PHP is, is a good tool for templating. Um, but I, I think it'll, it'll fit in well enough. Um, registering blocks pretty easy. They have uh, a couple of options. Uh, the documentation is up um, for the arguments that you can feed it. Um, this is an example of a really, really minimal uh, testimonial block that we're registering. Um, we have uh, some unsurprising things happening here. Name, title, description. Uh, category is, is great because what you've probably noticed with Gutenberg is you have those different categorizations, right? You, you, that's how you designate that. Um, icon, uh, this will accept any of the Dashicon uh, names and just give you that icon. Uh, and then keywords, what they actually start typing to try to find them, this is, this is where you can specify the, uh, the keywords where they try to search for it. Um, there's a quick Dashicon cheat sheet, uh, both, you've probably seen the Dashcon uh, uh, resources from the .org site, but there's also a really cool cheat sheet. Th the slides are um, up on my uh, Twitter profile, uh, Meisner, uh, Meisner-ism. Um, you could also just check out the 
uh, WC AVL hashtag and it's probably, I don't know, four or five tweets down right now because I posted it just a little while ago. But yeah, any of those icons on there just for some quick choices uh, when you're creating these things, uh, really helpful. Uh, once you have it registered, once you had registered it with code, then you can actually add fields to it in the way that you've added fields to lots of things with ACF over the years. Uh, so I'm gonna bounce back and forth real quick. If you are a GUI user of ACF, right, at that point after it's registered, which please do that in the plugin, uh, that's, where, that's really where that belongs, uh, you'll now have this option of block and you will be able to see all the different blocks that are available to, to try to register it to. Um, okay, this is what it looks like in code. Recognize the new uh, option that we have for parameter block, and then we're specifying which ones we're using. That, this would be, uh, in, this, in this example, that should be like ACF slash testimonials. Minor note for uh, people like that really like to mess with this stuff, if you try to feed at least right now, if you try to feed ACF a slug uh, for your block name with underscores, it will convert them to dashes. It's a weird thing. I feel like I need to post some yeah. issue or something, but just if <laughs> that, that was, that wasted a whole day. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so, so we have the basics down now on how to register. I mean, it's really simple, guys. You just registering the name and some details, right? It pops up in the, the way that you would think or again, use location with an array of array of arrays to designate where your fields are gonna go, right? That's an example of just using a, some title. Uh, but now we can bring Twig or Timber in. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna show a dichotomy between render template, I'm just pointing to a file, like hey, here's where the, the stuff's gonna be. And it's gonna, it, it would pass some variables um, that are available to us within that context. But uh, again, there's a couple of things that people like to use. I like Twig. Um, I also am a big advocate of uh, uh, Blade. Um, use a templating language to keep your HTML clean, please. Uh, PHP is not really well built for it. Uh, it, it it muddies up the code, in my opinion. Um, if you can get away with it, and you don't have to deal with standards that that are forcing you to keep with just PHP, I highly recommend implementing some kind of templating system. So this is us integrating Timber slash Twig with uh, with ACF's registration. So instead of using render template like we see at the bottom there, we're just using render callback. Um, now there's a couple different ways we could try to go about this. We could have done that kind of logic in that template where we're sending them. Uh, I'm just using a simple anonymous function inside of our callback to kind of set up a format of what, what I would do most of the time. If you've used Timber before, which is the integration, like a really great, well-built integration between uh, WordPress and Twig, uh, this git context is super, super powerful. So that grabs a whole bunch of data that they predict that we would actually need. It's very performant, it caches really well. Uh, now we're also adding information that gets passed in from that callback. Uh, the block uh, is preview, right? We're tagging that on. Uh, and then we're even uh, getting all the fields from ACF. This stuff plays really well together. And then we pass that entire variable context into where we're rendering our twig template. And now we, now we have like a system if we, we keep doing this this way, uh, you can set up a whole bunch of your custom blocks of sort over time, right? So if you have 25, uh, each site that you build for your clients, most of the things that you're building are not unique, right? They're just not, they're, they're using the same fields, uh, the headings and descriptions and buttons and it's call to action and you can, you can pre-register and pre-build these things over time and your, the way that you like to do it with maybe whatever the accessibility standards that you want in there with the HTML, HTML5 tags that you want. So you can build that up over time and, and have these uh, uh, set up what, what, like what you've probably done with flexible content already. I, most of us that do this work this way have that 
would do the same thing. In fact, depending on how those templates are set up for your flexible content, it's not too hard to just use exactly what you have and make sure that the data is mapped the same way to that new template. You don't have to rebuild it, right? Just now you can just switch over to Gutenberg. Okay. Um, I always, I, 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 quick anecdote. Git fields uh, always kind of freaked me out. I didn't feel like that was very performant, but the way it leverages uh, the caching system within WordPress, I think it's, I think it's plenty fine. So if that's anywhere in your brain, like, ooh, I don't know about doing that. Actually, it's decent. It's fine. It's just fine. Um, okay, so trying to actually utilize Twig. Uh, this is this is where I get to show off why I, why I think it's simpler um, and why I think it creates drier code. Literally have to type less. Uh, I don't know about you, but I but I get real sick if, if I'm in HTML and I'm bouncing in and out of, or if I'm in a PHP file and I'm bouncing in and out of HTML, I really hate brackets and question marks and PHP. And I mean, it's it's just it's a little infuriating. Um, it's not a very good system. And if you've ever used anything like Blade or Mustache or any templating language, anything else, uh, it feels pretty darn nice, right? It's a lot easier to pass stuff around um, and to keep. So this is an example of uh, how I do like BEM structures, uh, where uh, my selectors all over my my small component will kind of match up. And this is, this is one strategy of, of doing that to keep things really dry. If, uh, if, I've got, if I've got another developer who is really technically proficient but isn't very good at naming things, uh, and, I, and I go, oh, okay, well, I understand that you named that uh, image left, text right block. Uh, can we just call that like a featurette or something? Something that's gonna feel uh, a little bit more meaningful to and then that's content driven rather than being so literal. Um, that's this is a, this kind of approach can help with quick quick renaming of things like that um, and quick refactoring without making many changes or touching much code to do it. Um, here's a more complex example, a more realistic example. I think this is like uh, taken from a hero thing that I set up. So. Um, The security on it is pretty darn decent and there's some really good filters and features for it. Uh, you'll see at the top, I'm, I'm kind of listing out classes and I'm interpolating block align with width so that I can feed in the choices from uh, basically every block or most, most blocks that you have, right? You can kind of like choose the width and, and how it's, that's where we're feeding that in, um, and, uh, and I've got CSS written, right, that aligns with modifications to width. Uh, it'll join those together in an array, uh, and then I can spit them out and sort of uh, implode them with join and separate them with a space, so I can really pretty easily feed classes in. Um, and then your, your bar E is just a general escaper that's pretty good. It's pretty good. You can get a little bit more specific. You can jump like a t uh, Timber, which implements Twig for WordPress, right? It'll add a couple of extra abilities like escaping URL. Um, uh, there's also uh, internationalization features that are pretty pretty decent. Uh, so uh, maybe the last thing I would say about this is you can also really get into making your code modular. Uh, buttons, we, we like to keep all the buttons approximately the same. I don't like rewriting the button um, markup every single time. That's kind of silly. So I can just feed it uh, and I can even scope it. So they have literal language like include this path with this object and feeding things to it uh, only. And then all of a sudden I've really narrowed how much that component knows as it's being brought in. Uh, so that feels very secure and, and, and very scoped uh, to us. And uh, a note about it's pretty. So one of the great things about this workflow is that you can create a really content-centric uh, version of the layout, right? If content is king, yeah, I know, I said it. Uh, and we're, we're really trying to push users and our clients and everybody to think about what they're saying. That should be meaningful. Uh, it's not really about what it looks like, it's about what you're trying to convey first and then everything comes uh, on top of that. 
I think Gutenberg is giving us a really great opportunity to. Um, I, I, am, I actually believe in it more than something like Beaver Builder in some ways because you are abstracting the thought of what is visual from what is uh, communicated without aesthetics. And I, I think that's good. I think the, the focusing on language um, is, a, is a really good opportunity and, and they're trying to, to create a seamless-ish version of that. So is preview is the way that we can limit or control how it looks um, otherwise? You, you've probably run into that a little bit uh, or, or had experience with that if you've been trying to build these like custom custom and doing them in JSX. Um, so at this point, I want to show you some of the code, right? I want to show you what some of this looks like. I need to un maximize this. Oh, which side of the screen did it want to go to? There it goes. Okay. And there, let me flip this whole thing over. All right. This is going to be difficult for me to do. I'm not going to actually turn. How bad is this? Are you going to be mad at me if I actually turn around a little bit? I feel like I should. I feel like I should turn you around. Displays. Thank you for the reasonable suggestion. There we go. Much better. Sometimes you just need someone to say the obvious thing. Uh, yeah, I just need that too. Okay, so uh, ACF has a pretty interesting like visual and editing mode that they that they turn on after this is maybe, yeah. Uh, oh well, I mean I could try. Oh look at that, that's not bad. <laughs> I really would defend it, folks. Uh, I think I I think Gutenberg. Um, at, at least in the context of uh, giving us a more universal way, like, fine, Divi, Beaver Builder, Elementor, all these people building these things, these are commonly, these are common practices of, on how people are building WordPress sites. Well, maybe they start putting their energy into the blocks, right? And they kind of, you know, rally around an API. Who knows what we'll see in the next five years, but I hope that it becomes something like that. Um, and for us custom builders of things, uh, I, think, I think ACF and the way Elliot's implemented this is really, really strong. Um, okay, so yeah, there's this little uh, switch to, to editor view. Um, I am wanting to bring the, Julian, I need one more unstupid thing to happen, and that is, how did I turn off the sidebar on the right-hand side? I guess I just never do that. Good Lord. Okay, thank you. Whew. All right. Right. So by default, it's gonna be like this. There's some, so there's some presets with Gutenberg, if you haven't already noticed, where you can sort of change your style, right, of how you're interacting with it. Um, but this is, a, this is about what it'll be by default. So I'm gonna swap this back over to like preview mode and instead of editing the content directly on the block, it, he puts it over on the side here, right? And it gets a little scrunched. I'm not super in love with this, but it's reasonable. And plus you can always switch back over to something like this view. Um, here, so here's my heading, here's my subheading. I'll also show you the component and how I've got it registered. When I'm using this, I'm, I'm cr yeah, yeah, I might have to switch to the mic anyway. When I'm using, uh, yeah, it's pretty loud. When I'm using these tools, I like to try to build that out in a class that I'm extending, right? I've got, I've got most of that already set up and I keep it really minimal. So I have a register uh, method 
where I feed it just a couple of things, including like a custom way where I've got, I'm sort of deciding whether or not there's on cues that go with this, um, and I'm trying to heavily leverage uh, HTTP2 and really break up this CSS and uh, JavaScript for every single component into its own thing. We're loading only as much code as we absolutely need. Um, but that, that's a little bit of more of a custom build, but that's what Gutenberg is trying to push you to do, right? And the, or that, that block system is trying to push you to do, which is very good practice with HTTP2, which we can all kind of reasonably assume at this point. Because um, if it's not there, then there's bigger problems at play, usually. Okay, so um, yeah, this is me registering a block. This is, uh, imagine how long this takes me. Not very, right? I've already got like predefined things of how, what my fields are and how I like them in ACF. Like I've just got little associative arrays set up ahead of time. Um, I've got uh, a, a whole method system and like I'm hooking into the right things uh, for that register method so that I just feed it exactly what it needs to know uh, and no more. Uh, and I'm sort of just registering my own little models. Right? And then I have little pseudo controllers where I can filter the results before it gets to the template if I really want to. Uh, most of the time I don't really need to. And it's just hooked up with a pattern of views that I take into the theme. And uh, my hero for this, my hero module or block for this is really simplistic. You'll see similarly. Yeah, this is this is how I've, this is how I kind of will divide my work, right, on the left hand side here. So there's my twig function. This one's actually passing into a hero because we're using hero all over the place. Uh, that, that module's a little weird in and of itself, but yeah. And I keep the code that is associated with a particular component or section thing. Um, all together, uh, and to me, this has felt like a very, very good workflow, uh, and I know that it, for front-end performance, it's pretty great. Uh, it's actually leveraging the OnQueue system in a way that I think it, that uh, WordPress wanted us to. Please. I'm gonna ask you what, uh, as far as word processing said, when you brought a block into, create a block in ACF, and then bring it into that word processor, scrape it, like what are we, what am I seeing from that? Over here? Yeah. Okay. That block right there. So let's take it. Uh, the question was is roughly, can you help connect the dots between the code that you're showing me and what that white screen is actually doing? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, so let's take, all right, so I've got uh, content in here, custom hero, whatever. I'm just throwing in some text. We'll swap back over. It's hard to do this while holding a mic. Doesn't feel right. Right? Okay, and on the top right hand side, uh, I've got all this nonsense in here. What is what this is my actual larger object with all my settings to make this exist. This is coming from ACF's API to create a block. So in actually using Gutenberg during uh, I am number one key, key tip filter like like whitelist blocks. Uh, you should you should just nuke everything and then start allowing only things that you want. So for me, I don't have most of the out of the box Gutenberg blocks. Right, I only have a few that I allow, um, and I take them in only if I know that maybe my view actually has styling for them and I've I've actually built it out is when I'm gonna use them. Usually it's just the, I give it just as much as I want. Okay, so uh, yeah, I have all these layout elements. I've got this hero custom one where I typed a bunch of garbage and I can keep selecting those and right and pull those in. And this is that's kind of like choosing the modules that you have with flexible content if you use it that way. So um, I think this is the path forward. I, I don't see a, a huge advantage over uh, flexible content at, at this point, one and two. Okay, so we're just talking about the question. So one of the, the complaints about using text meta is that uh, previews don't necessarily work with text meta. Is 
think actually exploring the value of this in the context of the digital city of itself, or local features, or local divisions, or is it still You want me to open up the database and look at it? Let's just look at it. I'm just wondering if you, if you know, like, the process of building it. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just all I'll take a look at it right now. I'm, I'm game. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, what do we got? We got post 38. All right. So let's get into 38. Yeah, right. <laughs> just writing down all the MD5 hashes or something. Uh, just deep surfing them. Um, okay, so let's see. Post content. Uh, we want ID 38. And this is what we've got to work with. So this, yeah, here, um, need more hands to do things. I don't know. Yeah. That'll be maybe kind of visible, kind of. So uh, I think there will be some, some degree of complications there. But they can also be set up pretty easily to, to I don't know. I, I, think, I think that's a fair, a fair concern. I'm pretty sure it's just being taken now. Yeah. Okay. The state, it's still, there's still stuff definitely saved to post-meta, but you don't necessarily have to access it that way because you sort of have like a pre-rendered, pre-cached version of that. So uh, I'll just just clicking pre well that's lovely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what I wanted. That's what you wanted. That's what you wanted. Okay. So here's the heading example. So right. Okay. I'm not heading updates. Right. Nothing. So I, I think that's fair, um, and I'd be curious on why, like, how much of a performance concern can we actually quantify that to be? It's not about performance, it's about having the free features do something that's meaningful to someone who cares about that. Now if this, so uh, what, this is probably saving. It very well could be, yeah. The rendering mechanism there, that, that, I could see that. I could yeah. definitely see that, that'd be interesting. Now, so, so, well, I, we probably ought to dig into this separate from, from this particular talk, breakout but, session. breakout session for that, but uh, I, I think that even, just even minor saves, I don't know, the, the kind of save versus update, I think is an interesting discussion. Anyways, we break out. We'll break that out later. John. For me personally, if I let me, let me restate that question, how am I handling portability of the blocks, yeah. right, in their entirety? Sure. Um, for me, it is a minimum of two things I've got to bring over. I, I treat it in an MVC-ish kind of way, right? I have a model, I have to copy a model over. And then I have that, the view, which is really sort of being handled almost in a React component kind of way, where I've got my little chunk of pieces. Uh, so I have to bring over those two things specifically. Um, so here's blocks, right, and I have uh, or here, let me go back to my plugin. So this will be my, my core plugin of the custom work that I'm doing. And I've got uh, a model for Hero or whatever one of these. I've, I've got to bring one of those over and 
it's likely using the exact same or extending the exact same class of how I'm registering them. So as long as that syntax is the same, it matches my version numbers or something, I'm good. Uh, and then I copy over the files inside. So I have uh, blocks inside of the, my, I have a views folder in my theme and here's blocks. And I would copy over my, you know, directory that matched that model. And that's it. I just got to copy over those two things and I'm good. So uh, does anybody have more questions before I, yeah, please. I don't know that I have an opinion on that. Um, yeah, uh, what is my opinion on, uh, on auto-generating? Sorry. Um, yes, the, uh, I think that how Twig handles their generation of PHP is secure. I do. Um, now, I've got the bigger problem of another third party, well, right? What I cannot speak to is whether or not that should be a valid concern. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is. I mean, I think it would depend on the environment. It could depend on the environment, sure. Um, and I would need to see a specific use case in order to understand the kind of problems that we would run into. But I, 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 I kind of understand what you're saying, but I don't think that that's a real problem. But I, but it sounds like you actually think that it is. And I would love to get beer and try to hear that out because I would like to know actually. Um, more questions? Okay. Uh, okay, so, so you can see sort of my workflow. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the only other thing that I would tack onto this, because you've gotten a very literal version of how I do this personally, and I'm doing it right now, um, is in order for, if you're using any kind of like modern tooling for front end assets, uh, that can get a little bit of, to be, it gets a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, I, I have like kind of a complex modern gulp file thing where I am globbing all over the place and spitting out lots of files. So if we look at my dist folder and we look at blocks and so here's, uh, you know, here's hero and I've got, you know, my JavaScript version, or my JavaScript, my CSS, these are, these are my look like minified production ready versions of these things. And it gets a little dicey because I've got a gulp flow with that that's actually leveraging Webpack so that I can do imports and exports for my little snippets of JavaScript that are, de that are for those components. It's kind of a pain in, in the butt to set up the tooling for it. Uh, I am working with it and improving it piece by piece as I go uh, to a public repo that we host on GitHub, it's just not, not enough, not enough hands. It's called Outset, uh, and I've got a package that needs to be updated, lovely. Um, and the, so I, I keep updating this right now, it's on a version two, is where, I've, where, I, where I swapped from uh, flexible content to real Gutenberg support. So uh, feel free to look at how I do it and steal from it as much as you want, um, if any of it's helpful at all, um, or suggest to me how I could be doing that better. Uh, that, questions, one, two, Like the render template, uh, like the like. Uh, the question is. Okay, never mind. Sorry, please. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, the question is, how, how am I handling uh, uh, registering those assets um, in order so that they can be on queued conditionally? So the ACF, or so it, this is what Gutenberg does anyways, right? Or the, the registering block functions, like the, this is how this works. But uh, they make it pretty easy, or, or Elliot made it pretty darn easy. And inside, I am in the wrong thing. Hold on. I will show you how I'm handling it. So I'm doing a little bit of, of a silly thing where I wanted easy on cues, and so I uh, I created a uh, uh, <laughs> a check for for options, and if I feed it st uh, styles or script, then it will on queue um, an associated. Uh, or it'll look for one. It'll look for hero.css or hero.js, what have you. Uh, the actual on queue happens. Darn it. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here. All right, so view dist file, great, great. Generate those, oh, that's right, I took it into a separate thing. All right, so um, I am generating the paths based on the structure that, that I've kind of predetermined what that I want. I know it's always gonna be dist, blocks, hero, hero, dot, whatever, right? And, uh, and then I'm just using a traditional on queue system to do that, right? I'll just register them all. And then if those blocks are called, uh, then Gutenberg's already set up to pull those in. Does that make any sense? Sort of. Okay. Um, it's, it's similar to, to traditional. You don't, the, the only thing that's different is you don't have to, when you're, when you're registering them with uh, Gutenberg, you don't have to actually call the, the on queue per time, right? Uh, if it, hopefully some of you are, are registering them and then using, you know, on queue script, knit the, the slug of whatever it is that you've registered before, and that way that asset only loads in if that thing is being brought in. Rather than having to do that, uh, the blocks are set up to kind of think that way to begin with. Does that make sense? Um, I'm not. I'm not setting that up there. Uh, that is actually I, all I have to do is feed the path for the on queue script uh, or on queue style to Gutenberg. So that this is where I'm doing that part. I didn't explain this very well. Sorry. So I am feeding it uh, the URL that I have kind of figured out uh, above here. And only if I have said essentially yes, look for styles or yes, look for uh, uh, script, would it try to on queue? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, two. Ready? So I think I think the version of this where you could try to hit it with a GUI is. Um, you've got to grab one of the tools that can dynamically register blocks. So you'd have to grab that first, because I don't think you can do that in ACF. I don't think so. Um, so I don't, I, don't, I don't think he's going to do that. I don't think Elliot's going to create anything that allows you to dynamically register blocks um, from the GUI. But there are plugins that allow you to do that. So if you did that, then it would show up. Um, similar to how when you're choosing a different post type and you're trying to associate those fields to them, you'd be able to match those. Uh, what you do from there in, in getting that to show up is probably roughly match what you already do, but I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what that flow would look like without having um, some explicit control on the render callback part um, or the render template part. Yep, for me, it's, um, is I'll create a small one of these files, uh, 
and then I start, and then I have an option, like kind of an opt-in controller. Again, it's really not a controller, it's just a filter. Uh, and then I have the view. Um, and I'm, I just, I'm taking a direct correlation from my heading, subheading image, whatever, whatever fields that I set up here are things that are gonna be available to me directly in the template that I, that I use. In this case, I'm using Twig, but it doesn't have to be Twig, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, there is absolutely nothing preventing you from uh, registering the fields with the GUI. Nothing. Uh, I, off the top of my head, the only, like I said, the only thing I don't have solved is uh, controlling the, the template at that point, the block template. Um, yeah, I, 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 thi I think that you have to have a little bit of code in there or maybe somebody's gonna create a plugin or something some kind of assistive utility to make it easier to, to control that, but um, but mostly, in, at least in its current stage, it, it has to, some of these things in my opinion have to be registered uh, a little bit more manually. I'm actively not concatenating as much as possible. Um, funny enough, three years ago, I gave a talk on concatenating your butt off, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, and, and the change is HTTP versus HTTP2. Um, it used to, we used to have to, right, like walk across the room, have a handshake, get one image, okay, then come back, Handshake, grab the other image. Right now, we can just walk over once. Oh, 40? Okay, well, okay, I have all of them now. And because we can do that, we do the same thing with CSS, JavaScript, so on, as long as they're the same domain. Uh, therefore, we can highly leverage uh, that, that far more performant tool, right? Like HTTP2 becomes super, super helpful for us to minimize the amount of code that we're delivering and making, and at least attempting to make it so we only get exactly as much as we should have, um, rather than here's the whole theme. It's no, no, no. Here's the header, footer. Here's the modules that you see, and then those can get cached, and now you've got them, right? And ultimately, it's just less less code that you're delivering. <laughs> How many, um, as a pre-register or whatever, do you use in your user interface? On the Air Force, so the, the question uh, was what our approach was specifically with a project that we did almost two years ago. Okay. Um, so different development team, I wasn't in charge of the team at that time, different practices. Uh, and I think some we're probably utilizing the GUI, if I'm not mistaken, which is fine. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. I, personally, I like to, to really try to bring that out of the GUI and restrict that down and register them in a way that I know they can be highly versioned. Um, I, don't like to, I don't like leaning on the database for anything that I don't have to lean on it for. Uh, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Sure is. Then eventually, the end user or the end website is going to, that's the whole purpose once they click or they found. Maybe they ought to redact some of the questions that we've asked people. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, to me, uh, a tremendous amount of the security is really, 
it's, it's really on where you've got something hosted. Um, I really, I, I, they're certainly not paying me anything for it, but uh, managed hosting is, is there for a, a reason. Oh, yeah, uh, WP Engine, Pantheon, Flywheel, these companies that are doing managed hosting uh, are working really hard on catering to all the edge cases that WordPress installs specifically run into. Uh, and if you're if you're just throwing up WordPress things on some VPS and you don't know if you're not really really good at what you're doing, you're putting that site at risk in a meaningful way, which is when problems like that actually come up. But if you can keep things on safe hosted, have a degree of guarantees via a SLA, uh, then I think that's the best kind of coverage you can get from a DevOps security level. Everything else should be like basic stuff that we're going. We should be escaping output. We should be doing like obvious things. But does that, does that help? Yeah, it, it helps. And do you can you remember approximately how many units that you use that you have previously took care of? Units? Yeah. Yeah. The the that block that you put together. Oh, how many pre-configured blocks yeah. that we? We usually, I, I keep mine down to about 15 or so, and they have variations, right? Oh, like, okay. you got a hero, and there might be an option to make it a full height hero or something, right? Some basic stuff, repeatable patterns, stuff that we do all the time. Um, we can kind of reasonably build those in. So you're not talking about a whole plethora here. You're talking about some basics in order to save some money. Exactly, exactly. And that, that can be the difference on being able to give the client what they need in three weeks rather than three months, is having some of that, that work pre-built. Please. Are you using exclusively custom dependent classes, using custom prefix classes? The question was if I'm uh, exclusively using custom predefined blocks uh, uh, or, or am I actually just custom registering all my, or only, only custom so registering my Uh, am, am I only moda, Am I only doing custom work for uh, my blocks, or only using them at all, or uh, am I actually using some of the default Guten blocks? It's a mix. It's a mixed bag. Um, when I mentioned earlier that uh, that, I, that I think everybody should whitelist, this is what I was talking about. Um, so that's a little, little compatibility thing. And here is big list of all those friggin' blocks. Um, Obviously, you can see I only enable a handful, and I support those in my base styles for the theme, right? Um, and then occasionally, like the new and upcoming group block, which I'm super excited about, uh, uh, I will maybe grab a package of something, something new that's coming out, and then I'll have to filter and enable that here, right? Um, this is, this, uh, this is part of thinking like the way John was asking us to earlier today, where we're simplifying the admin UI. If there's just a tremendous amount of blocks for people to sort through, that's a bad user experience in my view. Um, and, and honestly, I think, I think what we have out of the box, it's a better user experience than tiny MCE and short codes, but there's still room for improvement. Um, and if you're delivering a custom website for a client that's paying you good money and you've got at least a little bit of hours to work with, you should maybe be thinking about doing that by default. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. One, two. Uh, mine was a statement related Please. to not a question. Um, I looked into the way that, uh, wait, where's that, where's that guy? Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. That makes sense. It's not put into the host client. So I think you're supposed to name host client. I need to look to see how it works, but yeah. does that make sense? It, 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 it makes sense. That's why preview is a good word. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think we'll need to write an uh, article on it for Russell so that <laughs> we can prove it. It does work. So I'm, okay. I'm not sure, but I think it's, that's why I think it's code to see. Because I was following along. It, it could be a Meisner issue. It could be an eyebrow yeah. bit. <laughs> 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 well, I think it was Sid that had that error because 
sure. When I saw the my little pet in her basement, right. I thought she was crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's like kind of hidden, but it, I know Twig does by default. I'm a little unclear on certain things that Timber does, if that makes sense. So with the three minutes that I've got left, um, what I'm proposing is that this is the way that we swap over, right? Is that this is the way that we build those sites this year. Um, and, uh, and I think it can help Santa. I mean, don't, you know, not necessarily my way where I'm abstracting it to some crazy class and I've got my weird on key system and stuff. But, but if, if, we, uh, if, you're all, if you've been building sites with ACF for years, like most of us, um, this, this ends up being a way that you're not blowing another 30 hours of a project on playing with React, right? And save that approach for the right time for the right budget. And this gets you kind of back to business as usual when it comes to how we have been building WordPress sites with ACF and flexible content for some time now. So it, it, from all the head nods, it looks like a lot of you relate to me and, and how I'm thinking about this. And uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on uh, Twitter uh, uh, for help or, or file an issue on that repo. Uh, I would love to see us actually utilizing Gutenberg sooner rather than later. So thank you, everybody.